As I mentioned in the last video, the way this works is I'm using a cutter with a template guide, which makes the actual finished cut a little bit larger than the template, a sixteenth in this case. And so I want to make sure that I don't put it right up, you know, squared to the top edge because I need to allow a little bit of material for it to grow. So lay these out to make sure I get them in the right uh, location for cutting out because I will be uh, nesting them. And uh, since I only have one, I can't lay them out that way. So I'll make some marks. I'll do that. Make sure I get my layout looking good so that I can get all four from one sheet. What I'm going to try to do is use a quarter inch cutter for this. Now, they're not quite as stable. Obviously, they're smaller. They're quarter inch all the way through. And so they will have a little bit more vibration in them. And also, they can break if you're pushing them too much. I prefer to use the half inch cutter and I may end up going to that if this doesn't work out or if I break it. But the reason I want to try this first is that the cutout for the strap is too small for the half inch bit to actually make the cut. Obviously the minimum size cut that I can do with a half inch bit is a half inch cut and this is actually a quarter. So rather than making the the whole cutout I'd have to do all four and then I would have to switch bits and then go back and reattach the template to each one to make the cut or in the process I would have to change bits back and forth back and forth so I'm going to give it a shot like I said I prefer the half inch for most of my cutting but the quarter inch is going to be necessary for part of it so I'm going to try to use that for the whole thing these template guides fit onto your router base plate. These are generic. It doesn't matter what brand of router. This is pretty standard. Um, in my case, I use uh, Festool routers most of the time and they have a removable uh, insert on the base plate. It makes it a little easier to get things kind of set up because then once I get this set up, then it just snaps into the, into the router. The sawhorses are made, so now I just need to do the assembly, which won't take very long. They're all identical, and because I use this uh, MDO, there is no one side or the other when I do the AC ply. This is the point that I would try to put the uh, A side down and put the uh, C side up again because uh, in this assembly process, this is going to be the inside, so the outside is down. I'm going to place the sawhorses in an orientation that they will close. The barrel side is offset to one side, and that is going to be up. And it's the side that the hinge will completely close. If I do it the other way, then the uh, sawhorse would not close. So that's important to note. And just check my dimensions here as far as layout. The layout of this uh, hinge from the edge is important because it's going to line up with the slots on the bottom of your bench. And then I want the barrel to stick up above the horse a little bit because this is going to be the reference for the bench. Now that isn't, doesn't really have anything to do with the stability of the bench. It's just for setup. I'm going to make sure that the uh, top or the shoulder of the hinge is sticking up an eighth of an inch above the sawhorse. To install hinges, I use a VIX bit. These are a standard bit that you can get at probably any woodworking store, but they're designed to center the bit, uh, particularly works well on the hinges because you just uh, drop it right into the hinge and it will drill the hole dead center. And it's a good idea to drill the first hole and put the screw in, not try to drill all three holes. 
you want to lock it down because you could move the hinge slightly when you are drilling the holes. So that looks good, they're lined up. Now I'll just finish the rest of the screw holes. Now for production purposes, I'd go ahead and set this one aside and do the other one. But for the video, I'm just going to show you the one because the other one is going to be identical to this. So I want the strap to come through these slots and go around the bottom. I want the buckle in the middle and I've rounded over the edges so the uh, strap won't get chafed over time. My benches are all set to 36 inches so I know my bench is uh, 10 and a quarter so I want to make sure that I am at 25 and three quarters. So instead of exactly 25 and three quarters I'll make it a little bit taller than that just because I know that when I push on it the strap will stretch out a little bit and it'll drop down a little bit and I can always fine-tune that later when I'm actually have the bench set up and checking it next to my table saw. Now I want to measure to the high point on the saw horses. Since they're at an angle the outside corner is going to be up higher than the inside corner so that's the side I want to measure to. Now you know how to make the saw horses. Next I'll make the frame and the bottom for the bench top and then in a separate video I'll make the top with all the holes in it. I'll separate those out for those that want to make the sawhorses and most of the bench and purchase the top from FastCap so you'll be able to watch the appropriate videos. You won't need to watch all the work the top takes if you're, if you're just going to purchase that. If you want to order yourself a set of the Park Workbench plans, click on the link right here in the video. Subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and most important, share the video with others. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.